As we should expect, the New Testament does not simply relate the themes of Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 through chapter 11 verse 9 to the first coming of Christ. They also apply to the continuation of the kingdom, the time in which we now live. The New Testament describes the time between the first and second comings of Christ in at least two ways that relate to the last chapters of Moses' primeval history. These perspectives relate directly to the importance of baptism and spiritual warfare in the Christian life. As we live the Christian life in this age, we come into contact with the significance of Noah's flood and the new order established after that flood. One New Testament passage in particular describes baptism in connection with the flood of deliverance in Noah's day. Listen to what the Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. In this remarkable passage, Peter directly connected every person's experience of salvation during the continuation of the kingdom to the flood of Noah's day. He began by noting that Noah and his family were saved through water. Their deliverance through water opened the way for humanity to enter a renewed world of blessing. But also notice that Peter drew a direct relationship between the water of Noah's flood and the Christian life by focusing on baptism. He said that the water in Noah's day symbolized or anticipated the water of Christian baptism. As we have seen in this lesson, the water of Noah's day cleansed the world of horrible corruption and opened the way for a new beginning, much like Moses passing through the Red Sea removed the tyranny of Egypt and brought a new beginning for the nation of Israel. Well, in a similar way, the water of baptism cleanses believers of their sins and grants them a new beginning of everlasting life in Christ. Now we must note carefully that 1 Peter 3.21 states that baptism saves only in the sense that it is the pledge of a good conscience toward God. In other words, mere washing with water during baptism does not save anyone. Instead, it is only as baptism is the pledge of a heart forgiven and cleansed from sin by faith in Christ that it symbolizes salvation. So it is that the New Testament applies the flood of deliverance in Noah's day to the continuation of the kingdom by asserting that every time an individual comes to Christ in saving faith, he or she is taken through the cleansing water of baptism and into a new life much like Noah was brought through the flood into a new world. As we have seen, however, Moses' primeval history indicated that the water of Noah's day delivered humanity into a holy war. Moses originally drew attention to this fact to encourage Israel to conform to this new order by moving into the conquest of Canaan. In a similar fashion, the New Testament applies this teaching to the continuation of the kingdom as it describes the spiritual warfare every believer faces. Listen to the way Paul put the matter in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This and other New Testament passages plainly teach that Christians today are at war with evil. Unfortunately, many Christians today fail to embrace this dimension of their spiritual lives, much like the Israelites following Moses tried to avoid the conquest of Canaan. But the New Testament's perspective is clear we must join in this spiritual battle. 
As Paul put it in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. If we don the armor of God, we will be victorious in our spiritual warfare. So we see that just as the New Testament connects Noah's deliverance through the flood to our deliverance through baptism, it also teaches that just as the primeval world was delivered to warfare, Christian baptism delivers us to engage in spiritual warfare every day of our lives.